Ни во што не. Greetings, 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 family, friends, and the world. This is Mikael, Eric Harris, better known as the Juice, also known as the Alkaline Water Guy. Greetings, greetings. Hi, everyone. Doing this e this night, it's not evening anymore, it's the night. Um, actually, I'm a little late coming on. I had to eat a little bit before I got on. So I'm a little late getting on. But today is December 25th, 2024. Well, the day was December 25th, 2024. I'm 23. Dang, I'm saying 24 already. You ready? 2023. December 25th, 2023. And uh, right here, we're, we're live on Instagram. We're live on Instagram. And also, we're live on Zoom. Last night, it wouldn't come on for some odd reason. I guess because the 24th. Uh, whatever <laughs> but other than that um we're live on zoom and also on instagram and don't forget the instagram and the uh my tiktok is lkhyym underscore the juice that's lkhyym underscore the juice on tiktok and also instagram and we're here live on instagram and zoom every uh, the day is Monday, which is Mikhail's Knowledge of Truth at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. S on the Sabbath at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And also on Sunday, which is the first day of the week, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, and you'll find that we're actually uh, each broadcast. Um, Sundays is um, Fight Fire with Truth. Mondays is... Um, Mikhail's Knowledge of Truth. Wednesdays are uh, Freedom NGO Group, which is Freedom Non-Governmental Organizational Group. And also um, the Sabbath is Assembly of the Righteous um, uh, on the Sabbath at 4 p.m. That's 4 p.m. on the Sabbath every day or every night, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday at um, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So, uh, we also, we upload from Zoom um, at, um, at Rumble, Patreon, and YouTube. That's rumble.com forward slash L-K-H-Y-Y-M. Patreon for uh, Patreon, www.patreon forward slash L-K-H-Y-Y-M. And YouTube, you put in a search engine, Michael the Juice Harris. That's M I C H A E L space T H E space J U I T H E space J U I C E space H A R R I S. That's on uh, YouTube. That's how you can connect with me. And if you'd like to get in contact with me live, or should I say direct, my email is L K H Y Y M at gmail.com. That's L K H Y Y M at gmail.com. And um, my. Um, my direct number is 770-572-5315. That's 770-572-5315. As I was saying, this is the night after the 25th, which is the 25th was the day, yeah, it was, was the day. This is December 25th, 2023. And right now we're going to go into prayer and then we're going to go into our theme song for night. Then we're going to go into whatever the creator brings. I don't even know what we're going to speak on tonight. So as the spirit brings, it happens. So we'll go from there. Other than that, bliss be thou, Father of the universe, that bring forth all living creatures forth from the earth. Bliss be thou, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Bliss be the Father of Israel. Bliss be the Father of the Torah tribe of Israel. Thank you, Father, for all you've done, been doing the plan to do. We ask you to keep giving us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, life, health, and strength. Who shall in clothing? Let us be happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, and prosperous in all that we do. We ask you to keep your arm of protection around us. Keep us, keep leading and guiding us, that we help lead and guide us in your knowledge, your word, your ruach, and your way. Allow us to accept your word as it comes. And also, Father, we ask you to forgive us and our ancestors and our forefathers of the trespasses we have done against you by going against your word. And we know you've also uh, trespassed against us. So we ask you to forgive us of our sins and turn our mind or open our minds to turn back to you. We thank you for all you've done. And Father, we ask you to be with us in every way, whether it's also, uh, also whether it's physical, mental, 
emotional, financial, or spiritual. In all these things we pray. Hallelujah. 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 All right. So right now what we're do, we start off with our theme song for tonight, which is repent. Then we'll see what the Father has for us to uh, come with tonight through the Spirit. <laughs> Other than that, this right here is one of the songs that I, I came up with when I was uh, as I was in Europe. And I was reading the scriptures, and the end of the first verse will tell you where I got it from. Actually, out of uh, Acts. Then. Repent for dying. 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 Repent Pick up a Bible and you'll know that read, 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 and you'll grow. Start at Genesis and read all through, and you will see the things you should do. Here's how you repent. If you didn't know, you confess you're a sinner, then you will grow. But you have to be true in your heart. That's the right So you'll start. Feel close to the Lord is true. You take one step, you take two. Repent for thy obligates. Repent for thy sins. Repent for thy obligates. This is the reason why I say, that you've done against the creator, against his word, and the things that people are doing today that are worshiping idols and not even realizing. And the main, the first three commandments really pertain unto the creator, as well as the fourth, which is the Sabbath day. So, we're where we are right now. Um, came on here tonight, didn't know what I was going to speak on, but you know I try to hold it down. Last week, I couldn't get on. What happened last week? Last Monday... I don't know what happened. Something happened. I couldn't get on last Monday. Then I ended up doing um, I ended up doing Wednesday, which was a very nice broadcast. Uh, some information came out. 
And uh, I think that was uh, Appreciate the One You're With. Y'all ought to check that out. Uh, a couple of friends, uh, they listened to it, and they really were shocked and surprised at the way the information went. And I was, I, I was uh, surprised, and I was thankful to get some feedback on it, the one I did last Wednesday. But today, um, today is, or should I say today is gone. We actually, the Sabbath, the Sabbath, what do I mean the Sabbath? The next following uh, cycle, 24-hour cycle, consists of two points. And I'm just, my, we're just jumping on this real quick. Consists of two points. The 24-hour cycle consists of two points. Night and day. The night is first. Start off when the sun, the sun, sun go down. We have the beginning of a new cycle for a new time period, for a 24-hour period. We have 12 hours in the night, then 12 hours in the day. Some people still can't seem to catch that concept. But before I get into that, I was just sharing with my wife today that I, um, I was saying, dang it, I said now it, it was getting dark at 6. Now, around 5.30, it's dark. It was dark at 5.30 today. And the reason why, I, I, well, the reason I'm saying this at this point is because some people think that, um, some people think that this is the actual birth of the quote unquote Jesus or Christ. Oh, something just stuck with me right then. Okay. <laughs> some coming, y'all. Some coming. And the way it's coming, I have to put it the way it's coming. Like I said, you know, I, I, lot, I thank the Spirit for allowing me to speak on things as it come. I wouldn't have asked. It just hit me. That's what I'm about to come out with. So I told y'all the Spirit, I asked the Spirit to lead and guide me. So, and I'm gonna ask a question because a lot of people do this. I did mention Sabbath. I'm gonna say, do y'all believe? Do you believe? Or whoever you are, give me some feedback. Do you believe the Sabbath day can be any day, like any day of the week, or should it be, or not should it, or is it the seventh day of the week? Can you just take any day and say, "Well, this is my Sabbath," or "This is my Sabbath." Is that, um, I'm not going to ask, is it biblical? Might as well ask, because that's where the scriptures came from. That's our history from there. Is that what the creator said? Did the creator say any day can be the Sabbath day? I'm asking this question for a reason and for a point. No different than someone told me today. They said, well, you know, as long as they're acknowledging Christ's birth, right? As long as they're acknowledging Christ's birth, you know, it don't matter. They're at least acknowledging it. I'm like, what? And this is where studying comes in at. See, people don't study nowadays. They just go with the norm like, oh, they just throw anything in the air and it's just it. <laughs> anything, people think the father is just a joke. And what I mean by, they think the creator is a joke. They don't know the uh, see a lot of people talk well with their lips and speak it in well with their mouth, but their hearts are far from them. The father is specific with everything he do. He's specific. Dude, uh, when when the, the sun and moon come out at the time they come out, they come out at the specific point of time. The weather and the, the uh seasons come at a specific point in time. The father is not mom and he's not a joke. People take them for a joke. And what I mean by people taking them for a joke, one thing is that, see, people are, are they blinded, number one, and they don't even understand the power of the creator. So people are just saying, well, you know, you can celebrate Christ's birthday. I'm just saying for the quote unquote that, that think that the 25th of December is Jesus's birthday, just for sake of, uh, what's it called, sake of argument. Well, you can celebrate his birthday at any time. And then when you try to explain that this is not about that, this is actually about when the sun has its demise for three days from the 21st, 21st, 22nd, no, 20, I think 22nd, 23rd, 24th, those are three days, 20, at the, 20, the end of the 21st is the uh, the, the lowest of the, the point of the sun, then it stays at that point. At the end of the 21st, then it's 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. 
On the 25th is when the, 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 uh, the sun starts to move back across the sky, right? For you who don't know this. This is the reason why we have a winter equinox and we have a summer equinox. You know what I'm saying? This is the reason why we have at the lowest point of uh, the sun when they, uh, at the end of the year, as they, you could say, at the end of the year, uh, the sun is at its lowest point before it starts to go back across the sky. And then in the summertime, we have longer days. In the wintertime, we have lesser days. In the wintertime, we have longer nights. In the summertime, we have lesser, less longer nights. See what I'm saying? So, but people don't pay no attention, but see, our ancestors watched this. Now, I say our ancestors, I'm talking about the people like the Mayans. Uh, um, what was the other? It was the Mayans, and it was, uh, uh, it's like their name. I'm, I'm look, it was in Mexico. The Mayans and Aztecs. Thank you, baby. Thank you. You are you right there. That's what exactly. Thank you, sweetie. See, that's why we need more than one mind around. The Aztecs. The Aztecs, the Mayans, the quote unquote, y'all call Egyptians or the, uh, the ones from Mizraim, which is they call Egypt. These people, they studied the stars and our people, our people as well, uh, 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 Israel. We studied the stars and we studied the uh, the times. We studied these different things. Matter of fact, there's this other brother named Mikael as well who's been over in Africa. And they have a mount that he's always speaking about. And he said, and I think he said the 24 elders, they each one go up to the mount and they, they, they look at the seasons. They look at the time through the animals. They look at everything, they look at time and look at everything that's happening according to what the animals do. So these are things that has been shared and shown in time past by the ancestors. People of the day don't know nothing about this. They ain't been taught that. Y'all people, and I'm saying y'all, I'm talking the people of the tradition, the traditional, uh, no, the modern day man, the modern day people, not traditional. The modern day people don't even think about the things that's happening or they're watching the signs of the times. They don't even think about it. So matter of fact, that's what I'm going to call this, the signs of the times. And this is what's going on. So the whole point is by not watching the signs of times and things like that, the people that today, people are so, and I hate to say it, but I have to say it, people are so dumb. When we was young coming up, we can remember, I could almost say hundreds of phone numbers in our head. I still remember my great-great-grandmother's, my great, not great-great, but my great-grandmother's uh, 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 phone number. From Detroit. I still remember her number, you know, but that's one that I, that's still that, that's logged in my head. I still remember compared to the day's time. We we can't remember none unless we really try to remember a certain number. And if we remember numbers, we barely got at least five to ten numbers in our head that we know by heart. When I was young, we remember all kinds of numbers and more information. Today, all we have now is what? We have these. These keep all the information when the information is really supposed to be here. We become dumb. We we become dumbfounded and we can't remember anything except the things we want to remember, like the stuff that this system has programmed us. Excuse me, just got through eating, I forget. Like the system has programmed us to do when it comes to work. Now you can remember your job. You can remember certain things like that, but when it comes to remembering When it comes to remembering this or information that we need to know when it pertains to history or knowledge of, of science and things like that, the stuff that you like, you're going to retain. You're going to retain the stuff you like. But when it comes to stuff that's needed, it's in one ear and out the other. If you go to your job, you're going to, you're going to, that job you're going to remember like, like clockwork. Because these are things we're, we're, we're connected to and we have been programmed to. Matter of fact, when it when is when is TV called? When we watch TV, they call it programming, right? This is what this world is. This world has been deceived and is under programming. Now back to the, the main topic that I was talking about, which is the signs of the time, you know, and and and, and the idolatry that people are not realizing because I started off with this speaking about people just think the creator is a joke, the almighty is a joke. And the reason why I say the people think the almighty is a joke. Is because 
they don't look at the times and they just throw anything out there. Again, like I said, they talked about, um, they say, Christ's birthday is on the 25th. Christ who? What Christ? Well, you know, Jesus' birthday. Uh, the prophet, it was in the summer when that, according to the New Testament, when the prophet was born, when that prophet was born, you know. That was actually when it was supposed to be. And if you actually study, you can actually see that was around that time. The 25th is about Santanaria, the, 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 uh, the birth of the newborn son for the following year. The birth of newborn son. And that son is the actual S-U-N. After, after the 25th or at, on the 25th when it starts to, to climb across the sky again. You actually, if you ever get time, uh, Zeitgeist shared that perfectly. It's a it's a, a movie called Zeitgeist, um, and um, it's got a lot. It's got three points in it. One of them is about the Twin Tower. That's part two. But part one talks about the idolatry. Talks about the uh, the equinox. It talks about the. It talks about a lot of information according to the stars and different situations like that. It's something if y'all never saw it. One thing I say, get Zeitgeist is a very good documentary that was put together that will make you see things in a whole different light. And truth is behind it. There's a lot of truth in it, you know. So the whole thing is that it's a lot of things that's in there that you'll start to see. And then you'll start to connect the dots on different situations as well. Zeitgeist, remember that. Zeitgeist, uh, you can say Zeitgeist the movie or Zeitgeist the documentary, however you want to say it. But look it up. It's got a lot of information that, that's very important. So with the situation on that on that behalf, what I mean by people take the creator as a joke, they think like uh, they just say anything. Well, you know, uh, 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 any day can be the Sabbath day. It didn't say that. The creator said the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. In it, thou shalt not do any work. The seventh day, right? Then you try to tell them certain things. This is when they're, I look at this. This is the precepts of me. Amen. Meaning you go about what you want. You do what you want to do. Now, let me go ahead and give you the precepts of men real quick. Because this right here, the father said he closed your eyes. The father said he has closed your eyes. I've seen that in a couple of places yesterday. Right now, I'm going to Isaiah chapter. Uh, I'm going to start off with this area right here. Right here. Isaiah chapter 29, starting at the 10th verse. It says, For Yah has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and have closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he covered. Verse 11, and the vision of all is become unto you as the words, as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned. Everybody suppose that went to the seminary and learned this information. Book that is sealed, which man delivered to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. Verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he says, I am not learned. So these are excuses. If you don't pick up the book and try to find out, you'll never know in the first place. No matter what, whatever you do, if you don't pick it up and look, you'll never know. Verse 13. Wherefore, Yah, Yah said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. Precepts of men. And guess where the men come from that gave you this information? The ones who put the New Testament together, which is called the Council of Nicaea. They don't even know the Father. The council of Nicaea wasn't even Hebrew Israelites. Israel, only you have I known. So how can these other people come and give you say, oh, this was translated, and this was coming from this, and no matter all this and that, they, you don't know what they translated to put what they gave you. 
Remember, the father said, I'm going to send you land that you know not. There you're going to serve other gods, wood and stone, gods your fathers haven't known. Let me, uh, since I'm right here, let me go out there, uh, 55 real quick. I think it was something in there that I saw yesterday. I think it was in here. Um, right here, it says, um, a free offer of mercy to all, right? But um, before I do that, let me give you... Um, you said it said what? A free offer. This uh, 55 said, a free offer of mercy to all. That's uh, Isaiah 55. Talk about the free gift of eternal life yeah. in the New Testament. There you go. But that's the that's the real truth. Free offer. It's the free offer of mercy. Right. Israel mm. already had eternal life with God. Show me twenty-four. Remember Exodus twenty-four. Remember, well, it wasn't this what I'm going to speak on, but twenty-four. Remember, um, uh, Nadab and Abihu. Remember Aaron's two sons that got burnt up by the fire? I think that was in. Let me see. I can't remember exactly where that's at right now. I think that's Leviticus. My mind ain't running to that right now. Not exactly. But what I'm trying to do is try to hit that real quick. When they got when they got burnt up by the fire. Hold on one moment. Still numbers. All right, that's the biggest 23. Nope. Uh, when the two, when when his two children, when his two sons got burnt up in the fire because they, they, um, let's hold this to the priest. Um, when, let's get go for a moment, y'all. Trying to get, I know I'm running right up on it. Mm. When these two, and I told y'all just a couple, it just hit me as it did. Um, when the two, when the two, when the two uh, sons of um, of Aaron offered strange fire to the Creator, let me go ahead and next. And that, and this is um, Aaron, uh, uh, Nad uh, Nadab and Abihu. I was just. Uh, Man, I don't know why I can't think of it right, right at this moment. Hmm. My mind is coming up. It's gonna be it's gonna hit me in a few seconds, y'all. Show sure hate that I had to um pause this real quick, but I wanted to make sure. Mm, wanted to make sure I get that because where he okay this right here 29 is the consecration of Aaron and his sons that's 29 of Exodus mm. can't find it right off that I can't remember exactly where it's at right off I used to know all this wrong point I used to go to everything but it's been like I said, I've done a lot more studying and been, and I've gotten away from the, not from the law, but from the book. Because I was moving, running, or not running, but, you know, moving around. Yeah, I got it. Here we go, right here.
Here we go. Right here. The sin of Nadab and Abihu. I'm going to share this with you real quick. Um, right here. Um, I found it. This one to come right up on it, though. And Nahab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them hit in uh, of them since. And this is the Leviticus chapter 10. You know, I'm gonna find it real quick. Leviticus chapter 10, the sin of uh, Nadab and Abihu. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire in the, uh, therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire. Let me make sure. That's why I have it next time I come. The very good chance, excuse me, y'all. All right. Right here. Leviticus 10. Ah, sorry about that. Leviticus chapter 10. Let me read this again. This is what I mean by the father is specific in what he does. When he has something, he has something specifically done. When he wants you to do something, he wants you to do it like he said. He don't say, well, you could do this, but you can substitute. He don't do that. The father tells you what he wants, and he wants things done specifically. And this is what I mean by people take the father as a joke. And, and, and I'm going to go into a few more things in a few minutes. Oh, man, a lot of stuff is coming to me right now just from this point. Let me, let me take it back. Um, Leviticus chapter 10, the sin of Nadab and Abihu. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them in, in uh, his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before Yah, which he commanded them not. He didn't tell them to do what they did. Whatever they did, they did something that was out of turn of what the Father said. Verse 2, And there went out fire from Yah and devoured them, and they died before Yah. They died because, of, because they did something that they weren't supposed to do, and they got burnt up. Verse 3, then Moses said unto Aaron, this is it that Yah spake, saying, I will, be, I will be sanctified in them that come near me, near, nigh me, and before, and before all the people, I will be glorified, and Aaron held his peace. So the father, the father was upset because they came at him saying, this is the whole point. You know what? This is good. This is something right here that people need to know. And this has been on my mind. And I'm glad this is coming out the way it's coming out. This is what the father told Moses. And this is and this, this is how he, he mainly telling them. Verse 3 is the key. Verse 3 of Leviticus 10 is your key. Verse 3 of Leviticus 10. Then Moses said unto Aaron, this is that the Lord spake. This is what the creator said. Saying, I will be sanctified in, in them that, that come near me. That mean, I will be sanctified in them. That means in them. See, this is your key right here. In them that come near me, nigh me, which is near me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. That means that he's, he's saying, you that come near me, I'm going to be sanctified in you. And I'm going to be glorified through all the people through you, whoever you are. Whoever you are. I'm going to re repeat this again. Then Moses said unto Aaron, this is that the Lord spake, saying, Yah spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, to come near me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Meaning that 
I didn't tell them boys to do this, and they did what they want to do. They're their own witnesses, as, as I shared yesterday. Yeah, I had to get this. This is Leviticus chapter 10. See, and this is what people fail to realize. A lot of people doing what they want to do. A lot of people doing what they want to do, and they just say, well, oh, God know my heart. And no, no, he don't know your heart like that. If he's telling you what to do right here, and you ain't listening, that's on you. That's on you. If the father give you instruction, if the father tell you something, like that young man that lost his life in Leviticus, 1 Kings chapter 13, because he disobeyed what the creator said, listening to somebody else. All y'all people out here thinking because, because the preacher told you or this and that, and the book telling you what to, they're, they're getting their information, they're supposed to be getting their information from this book, remember? Excuse me, the ones that y'all call yourself listening to, the so-called preacher that y'all listening to, supposed to get their information from here, right? You get the same information. So how is he going to tell you something different than what was, play, what was placed here for us? Mm. And I'm one more three, one more time. And Moses said unto Aaron, it is that, it says, said, uh -uh. Moses said unto Aaron, this is that Yah spake saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, come near me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held a cup. What could Aaron say? That's the father. Both his sons is gone. He may have other children, but his, I remember maybe his oldest too. But they died because they did what? Thank you, baby. They disobeyed the father's word. And just like I shared with y'all yesterday. Oh, let me go here. Now, of course, that's why a lot of people die, baby. It'd be good if you was down here next to me where I can hear you. Well, where they can hear you anyway. Right here. This is your key right here. See, this is your key. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 and 23. Something I shared on the Sabbath. It states, and Samuel said, have the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying as obeying the voice of the Lord behold to obey is better than sacrifice to obey is better than to obey is better than doing what you want to do to obey is think you do something better than okay I'll do this and maybe I'll be forgiven no to obey is the key Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken, meaning to hear, than the fat of rams. Verse 23. For rebellion is, is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion to the Father's word is as, is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is, is as iniquity and idolatry. Being stubborn, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. It's just like being in idolatry. You know, just like idolatry, worshiping a different God. Because thou has rejected the word of Yah, he uh he has also rejected thee from being king. That's when Samuel told uh told Saul that the first king that the father rejected you. Because you number one is you disobeyed, you did what you want to do, and then you listen to other people. Same thing. People listen to other people gets you in trouble. A lot of y'all is going by with the precepts of men, by these preachers and everybody going on. They show some today on um on, on um on Instagram that I saw. Uh what's his name? Tyler Prairie got up there and put his hand on, on, on T D Jake's forehead. T D Jake supposed to be a, a minister, am I correct? Supposed to be? Yeah. I don't follow him. But yeah, still, he had his hand on T.D. Jake's head, and then I think he was supposed to have given a million dollar, a million dollar uh, check to T.D. Jake, and had his hand on T.D. and T.D. Jake laying back there. He had his hand on uh, what's called. He sit out there praying. He just T.D. Yeah. Jake. Yeah. Man, y'all blasphemy. 
of your, your of the creator's word and the creator's flock. A lot of y'all committing blasphemy. Y'all not even going according to what the creator say according to his word. A lot of people preaching their own thing. You're not teaching what the law say do. The voice of the creator. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness. You got a lot of stubborn okay. people out there. But y'all what? You can't say you ain't heard. You can't say you ain't heard because I'm definitely doing my job. And you can't say that you don't have a book to read for yourself. And in your reading, ask for guidance and ask for uh, acknowledgement of the word while you're reading. Ask the Father to lead and guide you. Ask him to allow you to accept his word as he put it there for us to see. Because even though no matter how loud y'all try, oh, that's the white man wrote this. White man did this. White man did that. Much y'all always try to say the white man did it. The father has control of the penmanship in this book. The father has control of the mind of the person who put it. I don't care who put it down, who ordained it. The father ordained it. That's why it states in Malachi 3, uh, 3, 16 through 18, that he gave a book. He made a book of remembrance. Now, this book of remembrance is not only for good and the law, it's for evil and the curses. See, the, when the father said, I'm seeing you in land that ye know not, there you're going to serve other gods, wood and stone, gods your fathers haven't known. He's showing you right here in the book. I shared a lot of it last night with uh, in Jeremiah chapter 16 and idolatry. Jeremiah 16 and idolatry. That's why a lot the world has been deceived and is an idolatry right now. And that's the reason why I went here first in um to give you that. Uh, this is the main point I wanted to make. I didn't want to read the whole thing. Y'all can read it on that. I'm gonna take it to seven. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna take it down to uh restrictions for the priesthood. Oh, that's that's not the eight. And that's what I'm not gonna read the whole thing. No, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going I'm to take it down to this point. Just because I started there and I want to just stop it from where the father said. But that's the key. I gave you the key. But let me take it on down. Verse 4. Verse 4. But I finished with Samuel. I gave y'all what I wanted in Samuel, which is Samuel 15, verse 22 and 23. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And y'all don't even realize the sacrifice was for the priesthood anyway. Priesthood didn't have a, a, a job to go out there and do the stuff that the people were doing. The priesthood got paid through the sacrifices. That's what the priest was supposed to get. When he brought, when you came to the priest, you're supposed to give him that. Now, I'm going to ask you a question to think about. Give y'all something to think about. When they got kicked out the land, they didn't have no more cattle. They didn't have no more of their own flocks and stuff like that. But the father still expected them to keep the law. Right? So if the, the father still expected for them to keep the law, excuse me, but they didn't have any flocks and stuff to bring to the quote unquote priests or the Levites. Mm, excuse me, I just got to eat. I like to eat before I get on because I don't want to eat afterwards because my mug is getting back big. I got to get started going back to the gyms. In the mornings, but sorry about that. I want to get back to my point of view. My point of view that I'm getting at is that, oh uh, mm, man, that bird just threw me off. Um, I was just gonna read it on through. I was just gonna read it on. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. That's why I'm so. See what I'm saying? That's why I need because I'll get thrown off track quick. Thank you, baby. I love you. All right, sweetie. I love that. I love we got somebody keeping me on track because I jump off for a moment because something will come and break my line of thought. But like she was just saying. Oh. What was that again, babe? Boy. When they were kicked out the land. Thank you. Man, that I'm full, y'all. I should have ate early. Man, this was going on. When they when 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 the, uh when our people got kicked out the land, right? They didn't have any cattle. They didn't have any turtle dove. They didn't have all this different stuff to bring to the priest. Just like when I shared when Jeremiah chapter 44 a few weeks ago. You can go back in YouTube, Rumble, uh, uh, Instagram, or, or Patreon and check it out. Um, 
Jeremiah chapter 44, when they was in the land of Egypt, they still was worshiping other gods, uh, the queen of heaven. The father said, well, stop doing this and keep the law. See, people use their excuses and try to use their excuses to think that they're going to be satisfied. Y'all don't know, this judgment happening right now. As a matter of fact, I'm, in a sense, I'm like a lawyer. I'm like, I'm either like a lawyer or a prosecutor. I'm standing in the place of a lawyer or a prosecutor. Meaning that I'm going to give you what the law states. I'm giving you what the law states. But it's up to you to do it or not to do it. You're your own judge. You're your own witness. As it states in uh, uh, Isaiah 44. You're your own witnesses. Why? And, and also the actual prosecutor is the satanic, I ain't gonna say satanic spirit, your satanic spirit that accuses you day and night because of the things that you're doing against the law, which is the system. That's the actual satanic spirit. This system is accusing you day and night, which it states in Revelation 12, verse 10. Y'all are being accused day and night because you're not going accord to, uh, according to the law. Y'all went men wearing dresses on, on television, which it states in Deuteronomy chapter, uh, 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 yeah, Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. It's an abomination. Men wearing dresses and women wearing men clothes. Men wearing women clothes and women wearing men clothes. It's an abomination to the creator. But a lot of y'all going to hear this and then y'all going to be like, man, I can't tell you didn't know. This. All you could do is just drop your head because you're going to be a style like, Ain't nothing you can say. You know how it is when you stuck like you're guilty, but you can't say nothing because you're red-handed. Can't say you ain't been told. You can't say you didn't know. You just decide to be hard-headed and stubborn just like we just got through reading. Keep it moving. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 4 this time. And Moses called Mishael and Elizaphan and the sons of Uziel, the uncle, the uncle of Aaron. The uncle of Aaron. And said unto them, come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. It was a reason why he told them that as well, if you listen up. It's either right here or it's in Numbers, but I think it's right here. So they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. Verse 6, and Moses said unto Aaron and to Eleazar, uh, Eleazar and unto and unto Dethamar, Ithamar, Ithamar, his sons, Uncover not your heads, neither rent your clothes, lest ye die. See, don't uncover your head and don't rent, don't rent your clothes, lest you die. And lest wrath come upon you, upon all the people. Here you go, this is the reason why. Lest wrath come upon all the people, but let your brethren, but let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, be well the burning which the Lord have kindled. Now, it was a reason why, this is the reason why. Let me go to verse 6 again. And Moses said, okay, um, uncover not your heads, neither rent your clothes, lest ye die. You're going to either die from the Father or either from the crowd. And lest wrath, there you go, and lest wrath come upon all the people. See, Eliphaz, no, 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 no. Let me read, look. Nadab and Abihu was a favorite because they were supposed to be in the priests in, in the congregation. They're supposed to be in the priests. By them being the priests, they, they knew, the people knew that them was the ones that they would come to besides Moses and, and, and Aaron because they was the priests. They was to do the, the, priest, uh, the priesthood. But the, the situation is that everybody was looking towards them, that you could say, according to what I'm seeing here, and what happened, they died. They didn't know nothing about them dying, but they died because they, they offered strange fire in front of the Father. But you see, this is the reason why everybody don't need to know everything. Some things are, 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 are hidden behind closed doors. Like a lot of this stuff that's going on in the White House and in, in, in the uh and in the upper echelon, 
the stuff that they're doing and been doing that, that the world don't know nothing about now. Stuff that the Obamas and Hillary and all them been doing that the world don't know now. Stuff that that uh Trump, and I'm not I'm like I'm not I'm not either part of that party, but I'm just telling you the truth for what I know. Stuff that Trump was trying to trying to straighten up and clean the swamp because of all the stuff that these corrupt people was doing that the people didn't know. The people didn't know this stuff was going on. Stuff that's been happening and still going on and that's, that's being cleaned up today, the, the, the masses don't know nothing about it. Why? That's the reason why y'all look at Trump the way y'all look at him instead of knowing what he was actually trying to do. Why they been so on him about get Trump out of office, indict him, this and that, and this and that. They, they talked about him more. You ain't never heard them talk about a president that was out of office more as they did with him. Indict him. Indict him. Send him, send him I, why? Because he was doing something that y'all don't know nothing about. And y'all don't see behind the scenes or ask questions, well, why are they doing this? Or why are they doing that? No different than right here in verse 6. Uncover not your heads in the middle of 6. Neither rent your clothes, lest ye die, and lest your wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren the whole house of Israel, but let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, be well of the burning which the Lord has kindled. Verse 7, and ye shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. For the anointing oil of Yah is upon you, and and they did according to the word. See, the anointing oil was upon them. They was anointed in that place. Now, restriction for the priesthood, and that goes on in for verse 8 on through. I'm not going to go there because y'all can read the rest of the story if you like. Check most of that out. But the whole thing is getting an understanding, understanding, or overstanding to what, what's going on. And the main reason I'm saying all this is because people take the creator for a joke. Y'all take the creator for a joke. Y'all y'all think, y'all y'all think what I'm about to ask you. Hmm. So y'all take the credit for a joke. When I say y'all, I'm talking about those that do it. The ones that, that think that, oh, well, you can do this like, you can do this like, you know, it's nothing. You can do whatever you want. You can do this and you can do that. Not realizing y'all y'all playing with the father. He's already mad. Mad because the way people, as a matter of fact, that's what it was. Let me jump back to it. Isaiah, Isaiah 55, what I was about to go to. That's where I was going to go before I got off. Now, baby, you had something to say a few seconds ago? Okay. Isaiah 55. I was on this I was here yesterday. It says, Isaiah 55. A free offer of mercy to all. Oh, and here we go, verse 1. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that has no money, come, come ye. Buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money. Excuse me, and without price. Verse 2. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfieth not. And your labor for that which satisfy not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Verse 3. Incline your ear and come unto me here, and your soul shall live. And I, I marked this yesterday for a reason. The key words here is ear, hear, and live. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear. Hear means to do. Just like when you when you tell somebody something, they say, and you tell them something, they say, uh, and they say, huh? And you say, uh, did you hear me? Hear means to do. Listen means like, okay, what you saying? But hear means to act, might as well say. Come mm -hmm. unto me, hear, and your and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. 
See, David kept the law and David was the apple of the father's eye. Before, number four, behold, I have given him for a witness to the people. That was David. He gave David witness, meaning how to be according to the people. And you, you see his, his acts in here as well. And then when he did mess up, what did he do? He repented. That's an example for you. I mean, he messed up and even to the point where he put a man out there to get killed because he impregnated his wife, he repented, but he still got punished. He still got punished, but he repented. That's the key. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. That's David. Verse 5. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of Yah, thy father, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified thee. He has glorified us. We just read when he said that we're gonna, he's going to be shown. We're going to be shown in him. He's going to be shown in us. And we'll be glorified. We will glorify him because he's going to be within us. And this is what it's saying right here. For he has glorified thee. Verse 6. Seek ye the seek ye seek ye Yah while he may be found. Seek him while he may be while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Call upon the Father while he's near. That means while you're on it, while you got him on your mind, call upon him. Start reading. Start getting close to him. Start getting close to the Father. Because you're going to get out there and do some things and you're going to get caught up in something that you shouldn't be getting caught up in. And then you're going to end up going, being led away. Just like being, just like being on, on, on a raft and you're on a raft in, in, in a lake or, 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 or in some water in the river. You sitting in the raft, you just sitting there. You can fall asleep in the raft, canoe or whatever. By the time you wake up, you're going to be so far from shore, the, the waves meant to push you out. That's the way, that's the way uh, 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 that the negative spirit, your negative spirit, because it's within you, your negative spirit is going to take you on out. you in deep water now. And if you're out there without a paddle, without a rope, without a, a, a oar, a oar, a paddle, you may be stuck. See what I'm saying? You may be stuck. You are you 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 out you way out in, in, in deep water now. The point is, while you're close to home, while you're close to the land, stay there. Talk to the father. Speak to him, because if not, you won't be you won't forget about him. You don't get caught up out there in the streets. Then you might sink. I'm just giving you an idea of understanding what I'm saying. Uh, seek ye the Lord, seek ye Yah while he may be found. Verse 6. Call ye, call ye upon him while he is near. Verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way. See? Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. That means that if y'all wicked, turn. The unrighteous man. Change your thoughts. Change your mindset. You do that by reading this word and ask the Father to lead and guide you. In the law, that is. Let the wicked uh, forsake his, uh, his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto Yah and he will have mercy upon him. Let him return unto the Father. You hear that? Return back to the Father. You don't hear nothing about nobody dying for your sins here. You don't hear not one thing. And it said a free offer to mercy to all. That's Isaiah 55. You don't see nothing nowhere right here where it says anybody died for your sins. See, understanding goes a long way. He said, uh, let the wicked forsake his way, verse 7, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return. Let me get that. Let me make sure I get that. Let him return unto Yah, and he will have mercy upon him. 
let him return unto Yah, which he says the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our father, for he will ab abundantly pardon. Pardon. Same person. A lot of y'all, I mean, I got one brother telling me that this is talking about Jesus and it's talking about God. And boy, they blatantly saying is putting another God with the Father. Man, they understand it's gone. Verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. See that? Verse 8, 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith Yah. Our ways are not like the Father's way. What you think and what has been given is not his way. He told you what his way is in his law. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Verse 10. For as the rain cometh down and, and the snow and the snow from heaven, and return of not thither, don't return back up. Excuse me, but water of the earth. And make of it bring forth and bud, and it may, excuse me, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. See, that's what it does. That's what rain and the snow does. It comes down, water the earth so we can have food. Verse 11. So shall my word be that go, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. And that's how the father said. This is his word. This is the voice of the Father. This 11 is key. It's another key verse. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It ain't going to turn to him void because he said what was going to happen, and it's happening. But it shall accomplish that which I please. It's going to accomplish what he wanted to accomplish. And it shall prosper in the thing where whereto I sent it. That means whatever he said is going to happen. Whatever he said is going to happen. Verse 12. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you unto, into, uh, into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Verse 13. Last verse. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the bearer shall come up the, the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name. And it shall be to Yah for a name, for an everlasting sign shall that shall not be cut off. That means that once the Father actually turned your heart because you're looking for him and he puts his spirit in you, you have... You all right? Exactly. Um, once he put his spirit on you, you ain't going to change because you're going to know the truth. And the more you seek the truth, because it's not a one-time thing, you have to grow in it. You can't just be stagnant. You have to grow in the truth. And as you grow in the truth, you start to see and know more information. But it takes you to make effort first. <laughs> Okay, let me go on to 56 real quick. Let me go quick to 56 real quick. It says, an appeal to keep y'all's judgments. An appeal to keep y'all's judgments. I ain't been over here in a minute. Let me go ahead and see what's happening. Thus said y'all, keep ye judgment and do justice. Keep judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come. Y'all hear that, don't you? And my righteousness to be re revealed. Bliss is the man that do this and the son of man that live hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. All right, y'all. You see this? This is 56 right here. Keep it the Sabbath from polluting it and keep it his hand from doing any evil. 
<clears throat> As I share with you at the beginning, <clears throat> some people say, well, any day can be the Sabbath. Monday is my Sabbath. Sunday is my Sabbath. Who gave you these days? The Father made a decree which should not pass. Oh, man, that would bring me to Psalms chapter 57, uh, 157, 147, 147, 148, 149. 148, 149, and 150. We used to read that every Sabbath. No. <clears throat> Again, the end of two is um, verse two. Bliss is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Verse three. Neither let the son of the stranger, there you go. I keep telling y'all the stranger ain't got no excuse. Neither let the son of the stranger. That have joined himself to Yah. When you join yourself to Yah, you join yourself to Israel. Because Israel is the one that he anointed in the wilderness. Israel is the one who we are anointed in the, in the wilderness. Uh, Exodus chapter 24, 1 through 8, key verses is 6 through 8. That have joined himself to Yah, speak saying, Yah, uh, Yah have utterly separated me from his people. <clears throat> Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to Yah speak saying, Yah have utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the Enoch say, okay, wait a minute, hold on now. Whoa, that right there is a statement within itself. Yah said, y'all. I say y'all, I'm talking about the world. Jesus came and died for the sins of the world and uh, for, for Israel and for the stranger. Right here, they don't say that. Told you people lie on the Father. People lie on him. The Lord utterly separated me from his people. Father said, don't even say that. It's verse 3 and 56. Neither let the Enoch say, behold, I am a dry tree. For thus said Yah, we go to Father speaking, this is his voice. Verse 4. For thus said Yah unto the Enoch, that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me. And choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. You hear that? And take hold of my law. The covenant is the law. He's giving information right here on, on uh, what, is, what needs to be done. Verse 5, even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons and, the, and better than of the of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. You see that? Verse 6, now that's to the Enoch's. Eunuch, shall I say. I say Enoch's. <clears throat> sure, I meant to say the word hit me correctly. Unix, the Unix. It's Unix. I say Enoch because it's the E there, but it's Unix. Verse 6. Also, the son of the stranger that joined himself to Yah, that joined himself uh, unto Yah to serve him and to love the name of Yah, which is his law. The law is his name. I keep telling y'all that. And to love the name of Yah, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath, to keep putting up the Sabbath. I, mean, I spoke about that in the beginning. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and take of hold of my covenant, which is the law. Verse 7. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. In my house of prayer, which is, you know, 
uh, it's a certain area that the uh, strangers are supposed to come to. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. That's the key, that's the key verse right there. For all people. You got a lot of these so-called Hebrew Israelites like, well, we only supposed to teach Israel. We're supposed to teach everybody. Everybody's supposed to follow the law behind us. People don't know that, nor do they understand that. They're supposed to follow the law behind us because we weren't supposed to, we was ordained with the law. Uh, for all people. Verse 8. The Lord, or shall I say, Yah will Yah which gathereth the outcast. You see that? The Lord God which gathereth the outcast of Israel, say, uh, um, let me repeat that. Verse 8. The Lord Yah, which gathereth the outcast of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him, besides those that are gathered unto him. So besides the ones that's gathered to you, you're going to have other people that's going to be gathered to you as well. Verse 9. All ye beasts of the field come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts in, in the forest. His wisdom, verse 10, his wisdom, uh -uh, his watchmen are blind. All ye beasts of the field. Now, this is talking about these people out there that, um, these, uh, 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 um, wow, the, 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 the wicked. I'm just going to say it like that. I'm going to say it like that. The wicked. All ye beasts of the field come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts in the forest. His, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. Yea, he said, uh, they cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. Sound like I was just talking about T.D. Jakes and, um, and Terry Pilot. Terry Pilot. <laughs> um, Perry Tyler. Tyler Perry. <laughs> Boy. Uh, uh, verse 11. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they which and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. That's a lot of these preachers of the day. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain from his quarter, from his from his place of being, from his quarter. Verse 12 and last verse. Come ye. Say they, I say, I will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. That right there from 9 to 12, y'all know that that sounds like the priests, the preachers. They are there getting, they getting, they getting hungry off the flock. They, they feeding the flock. They ain't feeding the flock. They feeding the flock lies and getting fed off of them. That's right here from verse from um uh chapter 56, verse 9 to 12. All ye beasts of the field, they come to devour. That's all the people out there that that that's using the father's word in vain. But back to the main portion of the story is that the signs of the time, and this is all of it. This is it. These are the signs that's going on. People say what they want to say, just like we talked about Christmas yesterday, well, the Christmas tree yesterday. Some people they see in, in Jeremiah 10, they see that this is talking about a Christian, but that ain't what it's talking about. Y'all, I read it from the beginning. They talk to me well with their lips and they speak to me well with their mouth, but their their hearts are far from me. Well, I think I'm gonna leave it right. I'm gonna leave it right there for now. I can't think of anything else that's coming to my mind to speak on at the moment. So other than that, I'm gonna hold it off. I did start late. So what we're going to do is 10th, oh, no, we still got a little time. I'm, I'm kind of making it short, but I'm, I'm thinking nothing else I can speak on right now. Other than that, y'all already know, it's short for the night. Y'all, y'all are worshiping idols. A lot of y'all are eating um, sacrifices of idols because when y'all go for Christmas dinner, they have to sacrifice to that idol. 
When y'all go to Thanksgiving dinner, that's a sacrifice to that idol. When you go trick-or-treating and get the candy, that sacrifices for that idol. For those idols. You know what I'm saying? The 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 Halloween, the uh, uh the Valentine's Day treats, those are sacrifices for those idols. These are idols and deities that y'all are worshiping. And y'all to sit up and say, well, you know, we living in today. We ain't living in those days. Yeah, the, the word lasts forever. The Father's law is forever. The Father don't change. And what he has done, he has given you blessings and he's given you curses. This book conceals both blessings and curses. That's why it's the most renowned book in the world. This book right here is the most renowned book in the world. And it's for a purpose. This is the Father's word in this book. And, uh, and uh, a lot of the others, because this book was made for Israel. This, this whole book okay. is for Israel. It's the history and the curses for Israel. Israel is supposed to know this, the words that's in this book. Mm-mm. All right, almost. Let's see what happens in a moment. So, other than that, you know, we're gonna call. We're gonna take. Uh, this is a little short, but other than that, um, I want to thank y'all for your time, your patience, your listening there, and to understand. Uh, I'll call this the sign of the times, but um, I don't know if it's about the signs of the times, but it's the signs of the time because. Oh, my well throw this in here while I'm here as well. But I was gonna say this earlier, but I wanted to save it to last. All y'all that's worshiping on Sunday, that's not law. The law is the Sabbath day. Sunday was given to you by man, peace of some men. All y'all who worship in Jesus, the Father never gave a human sacrifice. He never gave a human sacrifice. Y'all misinterpreted what you're reading. And I've given information. Um, I've given information in here about certain situations. Well, not today, but I can't remember exactly this one. When I read uh First Kings chapter First Kings chapter uh excuse me. No, a prophet by name. No, a, a, a prophecy by name. That's it. When I when I gave you first kings. Chapter 13 and Second Chronicles chapter 34, I believe it is. I want to make sure I got it right. First Kings chapter 13. Hold on, I'm gonna give it to you real quick, just so you know. All right, right there, yep. Second Chronicles chapter 34. Yep. Prophecy by name. See, when the father gives something, he's specific on what he's saying and specific on what he do. But a lot of y'all take the father for a joke. A lot of y'all take the creator for, the, for a joke. Y'all gonna find out he ain't no joke. He's specific in what he say. And what he mean by what he said by the examples that show. Uh, uh, Aaron's two sons found that out, but they lost their life finding it out. Examples is all through the book about when the father said something, he hold to. It's no different than the young lady that came in the house after this guy made a, 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 a vow, which is what the father said. Uh, this this young this man said the first, first thing that comes through the door, I'm going to sacrifice it to the father. He had to sacrifice his daughter because he made a vow. One, because the father told him to do it. The man did it according to his vow. He had to hold to it. So if the father say something, he mean what he say. A lot of y'all don't get it. Mm, I'm trying to see what. Mm, I don't even know how many you can give it this one, but I'm gonna let it come. However the father give it to me, give to him. But the whole thing I'm sharing with y'all is the things that y'all doing that was given to you, you got. You got several names in the New Testament that, that 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 provides you with this prophet that came that's supposed to, that's supposed to that came and it, and that right there is confusion within itself. The first was 
Isus, I E S U S, in the 1611 Bible, then in the Revised King James Version, which is the Authorized King James Version, in the Revised King James Version, you got Jesus, J J E S U S, which the J was made in, in the, um uh, in 1604, put in the English alphabet then as the tenth letter. So you couldn't get that. Then people, are, well, well, you know, they just, they, you know, when they did it, they translated, they give all those excuses. See what I mean by excuses? Y'all not serious about the creator. Y'all give excuses because if Yahshua, which is the real prophet that came, they gave him to put the name Jesus. That's why it's called the greatest story ever told. They put Jesus there to give you a greatest story ever told because Jesus took on the story of Yahshua and it was modified and changed up. This is where the this is where the 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 troop of the father said that you're gonna serve other gods. That story, whole story, ain't true, and they mixed up stuff. And when I really do your research, you can find this information out because I know what I found out. I know what I've come to know. So the point that I'm giving you is that the fact that there are uh, this guy they they, they had Ilzus, Ilzus, uh, 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 in the um. Uh, in the, um in the 1611 Bible, which is the authorized King James Version, then in the then the uh, revised King James Version, they gave you Jesus. So after Jesus, then what? Why are they telling you Jesus, Mike? Why are they giving you Jesus? They tell you that he, this is supposed to be Emmanuel, which this was long before the time of the Roman or Greek Empire. This was waiting in the time of Babylon. Before Babylon, that was in the time of Babylon, in the Babylonian Empire. This was way back in that time. It wasn't even in the time of Jesus, or in the time of the Greek and the Roman Empire. That was supposed to happen in 65 years, which you'll find in Isaiah 7 and verse 8. This was supposed to happen in three score and, uh, three score and 10 years. Or three score and five years. 65 years. That was supposed to happen. That was centuries before the, uh, the Greek and Roman Empire happened, but they threw that in there to cut and paste. You can't see it, and you ain't did the research to find out, because all you do is believe in what they put in front of your face. That's number three. And to top it off, besides uh, um, Isus, Jesus, and Emmanuel, the names is of two pagan gods. The two pagan gods is Ea and Zeus, the Babylonian god and the Greek god. Ea and Zeus, they combine the names to be Isus, then Jesus. And then they tell you that it's Emmanuel. So the whole thing is those four situations that, that, that's telling you about who that prophet is with the real name is Yahshua. And like I was saying a few moments ago, if Yahshua brought the children of Israel from the, from the, from the desert from the 40, after the 40 years and brought them into the land, why couldn't they use that same name in the New Testament? Y'all make y'all excuses all day long and say, well, yeah, this is the name. Jesus is, it means savior. Jesus, you know, it don't. And they say it means savior, but that, that that's not who that was supposed to be. Mikael means uh, 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 one who is like God, but that don't mean he's God. I am that Mikael in Daniel chapter 12, verses one, two, three. Yeah, that's me. Showing the holy people who they're really supposed to be. Waking them out of their dead beds, which is really in their head. For all of you living in the new, this is for you. I'm that same Mikael in Revelations 12, battling that red dragon where Satan dwells, who deceived the whole world but prevail of not, because the horn is blown without a doubt. This was prophesied for you to see that that Mikael is really me. So the whole thing I'm trying to share with y'all is Mikael means one thing. That doesn't mean that that's who it is at that point. I mean that that he's God. And we got people saying that Jesus is God and God is God. The Father they have no other God before me. He's the only one. Y'all, I got to put this in your ear before I go. In the 44. Isaiah 44. And we ain't going, we ain't, we ain't gonna go with the with the with the curse point. Um, all through here, you give all. I'm just gonna say, the Lord, the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel. I'm just gonna hit you with this real quick 44 and 21. 
I think first I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start with 44 and uh, and and one, and then I'm gonna jump to 21. I'm just gonna end it with this on a good note, because a lot of y'all don't take the creative. Y'all y'all don't y'all y'all don't understand. Y'all y'all really don't understand. 44 and and one through five, and then I'm gonna jump to 21. The spirit of Yah to be on Israel. This is where we're coming to for those who choose the Father's word. Yet now, here, O Jacob, my servant, straight out. Jacob is his servant. And Israel, whom I have chosen. See, when he put his spirit upon you, you're chosen. Thus said Yah that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help, which will help thee Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Yeshurun, whom I have chosen, another surname for Israel. Verse 3, for I will pour out, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon the seed, thy seed, and my blessings upon thine offspring. That was verse 3. Verse 4, and they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. Verse 5, last verse for the moment. One shall say, I am the Lord. This is going on today. This is the, see, Christ is already here today. The Messiah is here today. Not the Messiah, but Messiah is today, which is the anointing spirit. The anointing spirit is upon the people, and this is what I'm reading right now. Verse 5. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto Yah, and surname himself by the name of Israel. All three of these things is happening right now. We got people calling themselves Israel. We got people calling themselves Israelite. We got a lot of people calling themselves Judah, uh, Yaakov, or, or uh, uh, something of Israel. Or, or Jacob, whatever. A lot of people are subscribing themselves and calling themselves by this name called We Are Waking Up. This is the spirit of Yah to be on us. I'm Mikael. That's who I am. According to what I come to know. Verse 20, uh, 21. 44 and 21. The Lord, the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel. See, he said, the spirit of our, our Father upon us. Now he's saying he's our Redeemer. Redeemer, the, uh, re, re, uh, 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 my bad. Verse 21, remember this, these, O Jacob, and Israel, for thou art my servant. Right there again. For thou art my servant, I have formed thee, thou art my servant. He said it twice. O Israel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I'm, you ain't gonna, I'm not going to forget you. You ain't going to forget me. I have blotted out as a, verse 22, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. The Father can redeem you, and, uh, Father, and the Father only. No man can die for your sin. The Father said he has redeemed you. Verse 23, Sing, O ye heavens, for Yah have done it. Shout ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord have redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in. Another time we see where he said he glorified himself in us. He will be glorified in us. And we're going to show his glory and show him to the people. Verse 24. Thus said Yah, thy redeemer, and he, uh, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. He do it by himself. A lot of people say, well, Jesus was there. This is not what the Father did it by himself. By his word, all these things happen. Verse 25, that frustrated the tokens of the liars. How many people out here lying on the Father's name? Using his word in vain. Blaspheming the Father. That frustrated the tokens of the liars 
and maketh the diviners mad. Meaning crazy. That turneth wise men backwards and maketh their knowledge foolish. A lot of stuff people say they make them, they make them foolish. They, they look, man, you sound stupid. A lot of people sound stupid with some of the things that they say. Verse 26, that confirmeth the word of his servant, confirmeth the word of his, I'm one of them, confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messenger. With an S on the end. And, and, uh, and performeth the counsel of his messengers. Not just one, it's an S on the end there. That said to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. The father said he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it through somebody, but he's gonna do it. Or some people that said to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers. All right. So I'm gonna leave it right there at 27, because this right here goes in. This right here goes into Cyrus. That goes into that's uh 44. This uh this 28 goes into 45. 44 and 28 is the heading of 45 when a uh, charge to Cyrus. But that 20 to uh verse 12 was that. That was verse. That was verse. 21. Verse 21 through 27. That is what it was just talking about. Now, I'm done. Just wanted to let y'all know the Father has given you a way, but it's up to you to change. The Father has opened up the door and given it because he know that he knew we was going to go into this situation in the first place. Y'all was going to worship different deities and different gods because he said it. He said his voice, his, his voice, he said his word wouldn't come back to him void, and he's gonna go out and he's gonna land on everyone because to do his do as he please. Now it's time to change. We're in a day of great substance. Where it's time out for the, the 400 years is up. The judgment upon that nation, which is the nation of Rome, the Roman Empire, is up. Now we're in a time of great substance, and the time of separation is happening now. A call to arms, come back to the Father. It's up to you to turn back to him. It's up to you. His arm is open, but it's up to you to make the move. Other than that, so the great substance is coming after that to all those that would do his will. Other than that, I am that Mikael in Daniel chapter 12, verses 1, 2, 3. Yeah, that's me. Showing the holy people who they're really supposed to be. Waking them out of their dead beds, which is really in their heads. For all of you who's living in the new, this is for you. I'm the same Mikael in Revelation 12, battling that red dragon where Satan dwell, who deceived the whole world but prevailed not, caught the horn is blown without a doubt. This is prophesied for you to see that that Mikael is really me. Other than that, I thank you for your time, your patience, your listening ear, and your seeing eye. I exactly. love you. Say I appreciate you. Exactly. Say what, Mike? Say exactly. Exactly. All right. <laughs> Other than that, Zoom, YouTube, Patreon, and Rumble. We gone. Love you and always. Peace.